What's up, people? What's good? This is episode 132. That guy looks like Theo Brunner. We're going to find out. The episode starts right now. Holy shit, loud enough, huh? <laughs> hey, what's up, people? This is episode 132. This is the Option Podcast. I am Jason DeBeas. This man across from me is Lord Theo Brunner. Dude, we got to keep repeating that name until until it sticks. Until, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah, we, that is, come on. <laughs> you know, we got, we got nicknames for everybody. I got personal nicknames for everybody, which I can get uh, further into the podcast. How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Just came from, as you know, a USA practice, so I'm a little bit sweaty, sweating up the room right now, but uh, everything's good. Yeah, got two daughters, um, so busy with that, busy with volleyball. Life is good right now. Dude, life is good right now. Um, yeah. So how was practice? Well, it was good. It was good. Um, yeah, we go like a three-team practice. It's Try Trevor, Taylor Taylor, and me and Kame. Uh, Richie Lamborn running it, so just go through a bunch of like high rep, high volume drills. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Thing just popped up. I like that. <laughs> the icon. <laughs> the whole thing that we were working on the first 10 okay, minutes. Okay, okay. So, where are you in came right now with points? Uh, so, I mean, in terms of the US, we're number two. And I think if we get a fifth or better in this upcoming one, we'll be number one, actually, uh, which is crazy. So, we're benefiting from uh, Phil and Jake. Uh, not Jake anymore because they didn't have that many points, but uh, but Phil retiring for sure. Right. So, uh, yeah. And then for international, I think Kame and I are somewhere between like 20 and 24. Um, but we're in a really good spot because our last finishes were good. Um, but now with a new point system, like it's tricky, but but we don't have to play the qualifier of these first couple international events. Right. Which is huge. So because that, that qualifier is going to be deadly. It's going to so, be gnarly, dude. Super gnarly. Yeah. yeah. Um. Where are you, I, I mean, on the world scene, you're, you're 20-something. Where are you for U.S. teams right now? It's, I mean, uh, again, with Phil. Uh, for the not, international not ranking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we're number two in the U.S. as a team. Right. Who, who so, is one or would be one? Try and Trevor. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Number one. Um, yeah. Then us. And I think we would have been tied, to my knowledge, if Jake and Taylor would have sticked together. But now Taylor's playing with Taylor Sander. Who doesn't have a lot of points so they're like five or something um after that it might be might be chase and troy troy field chase budinger maybe nick and andy i'm not sure who's ahead of nick and andy or taylor taylor right but so they're um, like four or five and billy and um and stafford are playing together again and stafford uh, playing again this year i think stafford retired two yeah. years ago <laughs> perhaps or a year ago he didn't play last year so he's doing like pharmaceutical medical device sales okay. something like that in san diego good so he has a real job so but we we message once in a while he talks a bunch of shit so it's pleasurable such a likable <laughs> guy though too Stafford, he? yeah he's a great yeah. guy great guy so i remember um what was it your first avp was billy allen right no i played with uh nick lucena for my first oh that's it was right kind of a half season the first year they came back um and yeah, we and we finished that season on a win actually, and made like three finals, I think. So, so that was real good. Yeah, it was a, a good way to come out for sure. But yeah, in retrospect, it was like, damn, Nick was carrying me pretty hard. <laughs> like <Right. laughs> he was playing at a really high level back then. Yeah, forgive me, I'm coming out of the block kind of awkward because I'm trying to um, do the fan questions oh, yeah, and yeah. sit at the same time. But you know what? Fuck it. Let's just start. I want to start with a fan question, and then we can we can spin off of that. This is question number much, one, who is Theo Brenner? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Given Conor the, McGregor, the freaking, right? The freaking AV, <laughs> AVP literally has never posted me and came in like a photo of anything. And you, got, so and you guys like, are no, no conceivably first in points. <laughs> yeah, but we're also the most boring team on tour. So, That's, Well, not on the court. Uh, look, there, there, there's a lot of people that do shit off the court that were, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, some to, some to a point where they leave themselves hanging out to dry. I mean, but but there's nothing unexciting about watching Kane play. Like, um, Oh, yeah, for sure. 
Good, because I'm going to ask this question and and it's going to freaking spill over to a whole bunch of things. So th this fan question was, um, how does it feel to have a partner where you don't have to deal with your partner? <laughs> uh, awesome. Because <laughs> I... <laughs> I've played with a lot of people where I did have to deal with my partner. Um, so yeah, playing with Kame, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's like a whole different dynamic. Cause I played with a lot of like strong, uh, elderly curmudgeons type thing. So it was always like trying not to have them be too mad at me and all this stuff. And, and now me and Kame are so nice with each other that we almost have to like create a little bit new personas for each other. And like, mm -hmm. so if something's not getting done, then one of us has to like be the asshole to the other. So. So we're, we're trying to deal with it, but, but it's awesome having like a no drama. And I think that was one of our best attributes last year is like when things weren't going well on the court, we just had a really, like we've been around the block. We're good communicators, at least like, you know, in timeouts, all that stuff, not on the court. I'm dead silent on the court, but, uh, but yeah, so we were just always able to like work things out and come up with a better plan and change on the fly. Um, and that's because like, we were never like mad at each other that often. So whereas in the past it'd be like, you know like johnny hyden get all pissed i like missed an on two or something and be like what the and then, and then it'd be like okay i guess we're that's, just not gonna talk dude, for the that's rest what of the keeps match hyden like, going right <laughs> yeah for some people it, it works it, like it works for john like todd was real ragey and it worked for him like some people just like are good in that mode um i'm not if i get really mad i'll be a little bit good but then i'll be bad after that so well, i gotta say i gotta stay even keeled well for me i would suggest that ragey does work but um you don't see a lot of people where Ragey is sustainable. Yeah. Like setting yourself up for the long game, you have to have a ton of grit and determination or yeah. just be this, this special kind of person where, like you said, with Hayden, it's him and it and, and might be him or one, two, two, one or two other people. So so having that, um, you kind of burn, uh, sooner or later you self-consume, you like a, like a damn phoenix. You just, you just burn yourself from the inside out and yeah. then... And then, I, I mean, there's so many ways I can go, so many colors that, that we can go. But um, I'll give you an example where I'll, I'll substitute Reggie with emotionally high. Mm -hmm. uh, Fallon for number one. Mm -hmm. Starts high, stays high. At the end of the game, she's still whatever. Now, us, me as a coach um, and as a former player, what I learned is that for every five points you get on the high, you're probably going to give up eight or nine on the low. So you got to make yeah. sure... Um, what well, we call a big waves crash, right? Small waves, yeah. you, you just your your body, you're above water, you just float on top of it. But big waves crash, or big waves crash on you. So, um, so for Fallon, she's a unicorn, and we want to take her to the lab and examine her, yeah, <laughs> examine yeah. her, and, and try to figure what that's all about. So, so there's that as far as emotionally high, but yeah. but with this certain thing where like every play is like the. Um, to a partner who's easy going is like the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't think, I think that's yeah. not the best way to play it. Yeah. And, and just like you said, there are a few unicorns who are able to maintain just like a super high level of emotion and energy for a whole match. But beach is just, it's too much of a marathon. Like you can get away with that indoor. Cause like it's a little more like meat heady. Like you're just kind of jumping high, hitting real hard, like stuff like that. So if you're super jacked up, it's awesome. But Man, if it's windy and you're getting every serve and it's hot out and you're trying to be super jacked up every play, then all of a sudden you're going to end up a little bit tired or mm -hmm. maybe be stuck off the net, hit a ball hard, make some errors. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, what do I do? Do I, do I push even harder right now? Mm -hmm. When the answer is like to maybe calm down and like stay behind the ball, moving around, that type of stuff. So that's actually that's actually something I used to struggle with a lot is like I would always just try and like run in, jump as high as I could and kind of OT people. Um, and then uh, actually this last two years and working with Scott Davenport, like my visions got way better. So now like a lot of times if I'm struggling, I'm like, all right, chill out, stop trying to like jump over this blocker and just take a look at the D, do a chip shot around. They're not going to be ready for it. Like, and that actually made a big difference in my game the last two years. So and Scott's a good, well, Scott's a good coach too. He's a great right? coach. Yeah. Great coach. Yeah. Scott, um, Scott's got a lot of good Jedi's too. Like la yesterday, I, I told you I had someone on the podcast, Ashley Clark. Mm -hmm. Ash, um, um, Scott was her coach when she came up as a player. Hey. Um, I, I don't know if it was like the high school scene or, or the college scene or whatever, but okay. it was, you know, pretty cool to see her have the same coaching style, um, which we're going to talk about different because coaching styles, you really have to gear. You really have to do that for women's and men sometimes a little bit differently, right? Like there, there's some girls you could talk to like dudes with long hair 
And if on the beat scene, probably less is more because you only have to deal with those two people. And you're yeah. like, I, I can get away with that. We're like in sixes. You know what I'm saying? If everyone's not down with that, it could be implosive. So, yeah. meaning, um, I guess on a general level, indoor women's volleyball sisterhood, um, uh, they, they perform by by picking each other up. Where guys is more like leadership through performance. Like you can, you can tell like you can you could curse out a guy and he's just like, all right, let's go. You yeah. know, and everyone yeah. else follows that person. So there is a psychology and there's a mm-hmm. shitload of studies. You know, me and John Mayer, I had I had a um, great conversation with him on that because he he cites studies that I that I hope he vets, <laughs> um, whatever. But I hope so too. But um, because <laughs> yeah, it's it's my least favorite thing, Theo. <laughs> study show and i'm like you didn't even fucking see the study dude what, what was the study? yeah i mean what was the study about they're, mid- they're gonna probably in 95 percent of cases show something different mm-hmm. in 10 years or whatever when someone else does the study so <laughs> yeah i mean but think about it like if someone says does a study on like midline passing and from men men's volleyball but the studies on women's volleyball right and it's like is it d1 no it's a d2 school is it a yeah. was it an 18 person roster no it was nine was the study um four weeks no it was two and i'm just like yeah beach study yeah. show <laughs> i'm not a big fan when when people cite like oh you didn't see the the one study from this one country they did on this one thing and i'm just like all right well that wouldn't fly in the science world so like i don't know why we're treating it like it's gospel for this like i agree um i had Theo on the podcast when we were talking about Cancun a little bit. Um, you remember the conditions in Cancun, at least for one or two of the tournaments. The that was wind, crazy. Yeah. It was savage. Yeah. Dude, it was brutal. B- it sure. put the BR in brutal. And I asked him because he made it look so easy. That was just my sets. He made it. <laughs> Well, shit. Next question. Beautiful about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I asked him, was it as easy as you made it look? And he said, hell no. Yeah. It was absolute hell. Um, so your thoughts, just take take me back to maybe, oh, it was three weeks in a row. Take me back to on, on some of the memories and some of the, some of the obstacles that you had to conquer um to, to be productive against these these world-class teams where the margin yeah. for error you know i mean right there's the other variable right the, I mean, by that, the way yeah. they're monsters and you know they're people i don't get to play all the time but go ahead i mean that was tough that was super tough especially the first tournament me and came played together was in doha and we we lost a game that like probably after the first set the Vegas odds were like 95% in our favor and even into the second set. And then we somehow lost it. Like they made crazy plays. I didn't play that great that game. We lost first round of the quality. So going into Cancun, we we're just like, all right, like we got to do this. And then we get like some grenades in the quality. We, we had to play Sweden first round. You know, those the jump setting phenoms yeah. who are now like going to be a top team. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're looking just like, good, man. Shoot. They're and they were really coming off good. like a ninth. Um, so we just kind of like, found found our mojo gritted it out so we beat them beat a really good oh we had to play Chile to get in who was a great team uh, although they ended up kind of struggling a bit that year um but man yeah it was just it was just wind ball so it was just like hey we're we're not playing volleyball we're playing this other sport that we play in the wind where like you're basically always gonna try and pass it like here. We're not gonna let the wind affect the ball and we're just running like up and down sets all day. We're bump setting. We're not hand setting because it just floats away. Um, and we got it going, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, and it's still like, I think we could have done better, but like in retrospect, we were definitely happy with that whole experience. Just first of all, getting to play international volleyball during the pandemic and everything was awesome. Being in that quarantine. Um, but yeah, shoot. And there was a lot of good matches there too. Like we had one game against Ali Sohn and Alvaro where we started down 05 in the third set and we somehow won 16-14 and everybody was dying, especially Ali Sohn because he's the mammoth. So between every point, he's just hanging his head, oh, just drenched in sweat. So Boy, that was a crazy comeback. Yeah, muscles need uh, oxygen, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and in those windy tournaments, like you just, you get down big and you're like, whatever. They can make five errors right now too, so. And actually, I, I wish there was more of that in the beach game. Like, we're always playing in parking lots on, like, hard-packed sand. So it's, like, indoor volleyball. And it's, so everyone's just hammering. But, like, once you get into those conditions, yeah, all of a sudden, you got to be a really good setter. you got to be a really good side-out player. So all of a sudden, these teams that always do really well, we're sucking. Yeah, so, I mean, and I think it's better. Because like, I think that's the beauty of the beach game. 
It's just like the variety of skills you have to have. So with more conditions, you need more skills and you can't just be a one trick pony. So I loved it. Yeah. I'm, and for me, uh, I, I guess as, as a, a being a professional, right? Be who you are. Practice. I mean, you have all, all this time uh, of the year you, um, and a lot of the people, particularly in the American scene, people that move here to train. If you move here to train here, then fucking train here. That means train in the afternoon where there's windy conditions. Yeah. Uh, Casey Patterson, I'll talk to him. He's like, I never call it. You know, when, when when the wind gets too bad or whatever, yeah. and this and that, and like the other, this, this is the the thing you're gonna like. The other team's playing in the same fucking conditions, yeah. right? You got the Norwegians. That that I mean, they don't even, they come to this tournament. They don't even have a fucking tan. All right, so yeah. <laughs> so so it's one of those things where you accept it, like you said, you accept it. It's gnarly, um, and. Am I going to be the player, the player that functions in the win, or that where, where some of my fundamentals yeah. excel, excel in the win? I think, I think you're a very good blocker in the win because I think you have this realization. All right, this this by the time this guy gets his set, it's going to yeah. be behind his head, and now, you know, I got to yes, make sure I, yeah. I, I, I protect. I think defense in general in the wind, mm -hmm. you got to kind of. It's a lot more just like reading the situation because, like, if you just think about when you're on offense you're constantly getting thrust into like certain shots just because the ball is blowing. So, you know, it's an inside set and then it's blowing out and you're stuck here. All of a sudden, like no matter what the block was, like this isn't a good hit for them unless they do like a crappy hit over yeah. here. So it's gonna be that. So just having the confidence like as a defender and a blocker, even if I'm on, if I'm supposed to block here, wind's going this way, I gotta know and reach my hands back. So you gotta be a little more free form in the wind for sure. Yeah. So. I also but, the thing I also got from Cancun is that st styles make matchups. Like there, there's always going to be matches that are interesting. Like K Qatar and, and um, the Norwegians playing each other two finals in a row. That was interesting to me because even though the Norwegians were the heavy favorite, stylistically, if the, if yeah. the Norwegians aren't careful, they they lose that game. Right. Too in fact, the first yeah. one was twenty one nineteen twenty two twenty. So they were um, close, yeah. And freaking yeah, dude, we we were feeling so good that first tournament, and we're just like, oh, we're rolling, we're gonna make it. Like as long as we don't play like whatever Norway, but we were still yeah. whatever feeling good. Um, and we we ran into Qatar for our seventeenth. They were third in their pool, mm -hmm. and we're just like, okay, like Qatar, whatever. They didn't look that that good in the wind in the video, and like we literally called a timeout when it was it wasn't a huge lead, but it was like seven four in the first set, and we're just like, dude, like these guys are fucking playing amazing like, <laughs> like they're gonna they're gonna chill out and then of course they didn't chill out for the next like five months i mean they were the best team in the world until the olympics right yeah uh, in terms of finishes um because they were like it was so windy and they were just crushing balls like throwing it up on the net and just hammering straight down we're just like what the hell is going on so <laughs> just kind of like vandy the 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 Dutch guy, when we saw him play Nick and Phil, and that some people the wind apparently doesn't affect because this guy was just bouncing back and forth on Phil Dalhauser in like whatever 25 mile an hour winds. And we're just like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, so, how did man, how did you? But that was that? an unfortunate matchup for us, uh, Qatar, that we yeah. had no idea they were about to go off. So I think, well, at this point, you, we can no longer consider them an underrated team, right? Oh. We, um, you, I mean, Sharif is the one that's more animated. Um, he's he's Man, people but... friendly. His English his English is is on point. He was on the podcast actually. He was on. Okay. Um, yeah, his next we actually guy. talked for like an hour and fifteen minutes. Okay. And talk, talked about this and that, but. Dude, but I think the bit like Sher Sheriff's always been good. But I'm mad. But man, he, he it was his like he emerged last year, and everyone's just like shoot, like like he's got everything on offense too. He's got a cannon. He's got vision. He's got shots. Nasty pokey. His like, trans game is nasty. Oh, so nasty. His trans unloads. game is nasty. I dude. love his arm swing. It's like such a thing of beauty. Um, but yeah, I think people started serving Sharif after. Everyone was serving Ahmed because he's like the weaker guy who was up and down. And then last year they just kept winning. And everyone's like, all right, let's just go back to <laughs> Sharif. So yeah. and it's funny how that works on the beach. It's like everyone just like. It's almost, you find one weakness, everyone sees it on video, and then everyone yeah. does it. So, like, well, to me, so everyone's serving one guy, and then the yeah. entire world serves a different guy all of a sudden. Yeah, but there, same I, with like Mole. Like, Mole was a little bit injured last year. So, everyone's like, serving Sorum. Really serve Sorum's like, Sorum's like one of the most, it's kind of like Jake Gibbish. Like, he's like very non threatening in the way he hits. Like, he can hammer that angle, like, wrist away, float hit. 
Um, but you're like, oh, like I'm so close, I get him. But like over time, he's just so steady. Um, but then Mole was a little bit maybe at his hip or knee or something going on. And then yeah. everyone's like, ooh, like look how tired Mole's getting. Like let's just serve him every ball. And then they had a couple like real bad tournaments. And yeah, he didn't. Like, Did he didn't just even play the Norway? third Cancun, right? Yeah, the third really, Cancun. He sat out. He sat out. Yeah, mm. but Kane's like, oh, dude, like you just got to figure out. Like we all figured out. You just got to serve mole every single ball. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's injured a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I don't think it's that simple. And yeah. people served him in the Olympics too, and that didn't go well for everybody else. I think it's also about um, what a lot of people are missing too. Is it's about clientele, right? Like, yeah. if um, I remember watching an old match, Bruno and Alisson playing on um, Phil and Todd, and they served Phil every ball. It was and Phil and Nick it when was, they got together. Well, it was, I might have been Phil and Todd because it was an older match. It was um, no, it was Phil and Nick because okay. it was, it was after it was definitely after two thousand eight, and I don't know how long Phil and Phil and and Todd. I stayed think Alex and Bruno got together in. Well, definitely be, by like or before two thousand sixteen, right? Twenty fourteen. But I do remember them serving Phil every ball, and like the first few plays, it just didn't look like a good idea. Just, but then something happened. And then all of a sudden you're getting touches and then Phil's wrist away just as just like just out. And then they win the first set by two. And then the next set they won by like nine. Hmm. Uh, and it was it was a game plan that in the beginning didn't look like the best idea in the world. And, yeah. and, and you got the um, the South African commentators like, yeah, I don't I don't understand this. You know, it's, they're going to have to have a different a different strategy if they're yeah, going to yeah. do it this way. Um, and boom, 2-0. Yeah. So so I guess serving Sharif is probably the better idea over Ahmed, but it is about clientele. Like, if it's you and Chain, Kane, I think you block lefties really well. You know, uh, long arm yeah, lefties yeah. really well. You 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 line up against their whatever, and sometimes lefties are the worst. Even at the high level, they need the specific set. Sharif does not, but um, yeah, if, if it's you and Kane, you work Sharif. You work yeah. Sharif. Yeah, yeah. Ahmed is one of those guys... And I, and and we could talk about Kane in this in this in the, in the same sentence to, uh, on how he's coming into this summer. When he gets a dig, the fans are on the edge of their seat because they're like, "Get it's coming, get ready." And what is it? And I'm excited about it. Um, you could say that a little bit about Taylor. Taylor's got a nasty transition game as far as American players are concerned. Yeah. Um, but I could say that about Kane. When Kane gets a dig. And yeah. of course, oh like, yeah. Let's not forget one of the best setters, in the, one of the best big man setters in the tournament. Okay, you might be the first person that ever said that. So I'm the only one that thinks that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the people are haters. I mean, I mean, I I like how many people would have Ahmed in their top five world defenders unless they they're mentioned in a conversation. Recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, recently everyone started getting on board because I was willing to tell yeah. everyone who would listen, and that episode, well, man, with, and that episode with Sharif. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the live version was like eleven thousand views. Not, yeah. not the 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 edit was like thirty thousand. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I have him, I have him on the world scene only behind Christian Storm. No, I got him. I got Christian. Christian's interesting though. Yeah. Like okay, big fan of his. Fuck, freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to tell with Mole up there. Like you put him with a normal guy, and mm -hmm. he's still gonna be a really good defender. I'm not saying he's not a really good defender. But is he that good? Like, it was the same thing, like, like with Todd. Like, it's like, all right, he's really, really good. But is he, like, the best with the best blocker by far in front? Like, right. <laughs> well, Todd's a different situation because under no circumstances would anyone serve Phil. Like, to, in order for Todd to win the goal, he had to be a side-out machine. And he yeah, was. he was. So good that, that, that yeah. kind of came into play. And then you're right on those real points. You got Phil getting an ace. You got Phil sometimes. I remember that one game they were down 6-0 and he got, like, like eight blocks or some crazy yeah. shit and you and you totally forgot he was down yeah. six zero zero game three so he can take over a game just like maul yeah um yeah but with maul being hurt i gotta i mean and them being the best team in the world you he's you can make an, an argument them um, it's better but nobody would cry if someone put Sorma on that list ahead of him right nobody that wouldn't be like you know, it's like Kobe. Check, it's uh, like Kobe and LeBron, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, either way, nobody's you know, as long as MJ's Ooh, wait, first. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I think Guto might be better than all of them. Yeah. Well, Guto is a, my top. as a defender. No, but my Dude, top five defenders. Guto's top five. He's so good. I have, I have. Um, and it's so hard to. Tell well, I have that. Christian. I have Ahmed. I have Lupo, and then I have Lupo's Guto, and then fifth, 
you you can tie that up with between Taylor Crab, Al, Al, you Alvaro, got, you gotta and, have um, the, uh, and Bruno. Okay, I always I still don't know which name is which. Perusic, Schweiner, the defender blocker. Oh, the that checks. defender is. Yeah. The, I think he belongs up in that top five. He is, Did they they won legit. Doha right? They've won a couple tournaments. They got second in the the whatever the World Tour finals. Okay. Um, He's he's legit. And Cancun, he he played unbelievable defense that whole tournament. They're really good coaching too. Yeah, yeah. But, talk talk to me about um And Kane. Yeah. Kane's number six. No, Kane is <laughs> no, but I'm saying Kane is Kane has entered that conversation as far as level of excitement. When he gets a dig, he's you very always terminal. feel yeah. like but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You guys don't feel it because you're fucking playing the game. You're yeah. just trying to find a way to win the game and score points. But I'm saying from someone like me who's a coach and also the fanboy in me. When he gets a dig, I'm like, yeah, right. And then, then you're like, and you're yeah, either, I and then you're either like, yeah, oh, sharp or you're angle, like, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's how you feel as a setter. Yeah. So you're like this, and you're like, uh, cut, on, cut, cut over, cut over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about Scott. Uh, um, as far as style of coaching, is he an old school guy or is he a positive reinforcement guy? Um, we had a great conversation that I'll tell you later, but I'd, I'd like you to see answer that question first. Uh, he's more like a matter of fact, realist type guy, I would say. Um, he's very like <laughs> old school then. <laughs> yeah, kidding, but I'm there's kidding. no element like like he's not just making you blindly like whatever hit five balls over the net without taping or you have to do it again. Like nothing like that. It's all like. His whole side out system, setting system, defense, like anything you ask him, basically, he has like a long explanation for, which I love. That's why I like Scott is because like if I get a coach that just gives me kind of platitudes and stuff when I ask a question, I'm like, uh, well, what do you think about this? I just watched a bunch of video on these guys and I'm seeing this and then you get another platitude. It's like, all right, like I don't like this. But Scott, you know, we'll have a conversation. We'll talk. We definitely don't always agree on things, but uh but that's why I like Scott is because he's yeah. real cerebral about everything we talk. Yeah. Well, yeah. Look, teaching moments, especially in practice, especially in preseason, are important. And when you have someone you have that good professional relationship yeah. um, with, um, uh, is the, is the um, recipe for yeah. success. With that being said, I really like that neither style um, exists or, or um, success. Uh, does not exist with only one exclusive. Oh, like no. if you, like, as an indoor player, I was just I had um, Wendy on the podcast yesterday, and I had um, my indoor girl Ashley, who's again one of Scott's Jedi's. And I said, 2004 Olympics, men's indoor, it's been the same, uh, predominantly the same four teams: USA, Brazil, Italy, and Russia. Three out of four of those teams have old school coaches. <laughs> three out of four of those teams are not doing positive reinforcement. And three out of four of those teams are, 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 are in there at the end. So I there's always this argument about what works better and this and that. And I think we talked about it in the beginning. We, we can definitely testify to what has better longevity. Right. Like, I mean, how many yeah. how many of these people just burn out? Right. Like Reed. Reed wound up being in fifth, five Olympics because of the different style of coaching and and that was to me. That's amazing because they train like assholes. We, I mean, indoor player, we train like idiots, dude. We, we, the, I mean, the landing and, and we just, yeah, the things we do to our body. I mean, yeah, I don't know what they're sure. doing now, and I hope, and I hope science caught up to what, what you, you see guys my age walking around, limping around on the beach, yeah. like, come on, Theo, yeah, yeah. I could take you, <laughs> <laughs> I could, right? Because everyone can take Theo. That's how they, that's yeah. how they feel about you. But um, yeah, I really, I think, like, I know Scott and I talk to him, and we're not fishing buddies, but. There's always this heightened level of respect that comes with mentioning the guy's name that, you know, I just, I, maybe I'll have him on a podcast and I could talk to him a little bit about. That would be a fun one. Uh, that yeah. would be, dude, that would, well, yeah, he better pack a lunch. That that would be like three hours, you know. Good. You just got to give him a whiskey. He'll be on, so. That's it. There's a <laughs> bottle behind you. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if he likes vodka, but but I had um Mark Fornicari, if you, you know the Pottstown Rumble. Yeah, uh, Pennsylvania, yeah. he finished second um, with okay. Nolan Albrecht, and he came in the podcast. And that that vodka bottle behind you, actually, I'm gonna just camera in on that. Where is it? Actually, I'll just go on my fourth camera and do that. That bought, yeah, we we finished that whole damn thing. We went two hours, we went two hours and fifty minutes, 
<laughs> and somehow, some way, like Joe Rogan speech, style, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but you know what the difference is? Like when you have old school guys like him, I'm going to just camera in on that. Boom. There it is. Zoom in on that. That's that bottle. There's an empty bottle. Have you seen her? There it is. So, when, but when you have guys like that who are used to drinking vodka and whiskey and whatever, the conversation is not stupid. Rogan, right? He he can do the whole podcast high. Why? Because he's he's always he's yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. He's, an, he's what you call an avid weed smoker. Yeah. So so, all right. Let's get that back on. Ooh, icon. <laughs> And let's get you back on that. So here's the other fan question, because I've been getting text these things. Um, um, there are a lot of new teams in the AVP. Is there is there a, a team you'd like to highlight? Um, as far as a fun team you'd like to go against, but also it's a team that's in, that you find interesting that's that's going to um, hit the hit the tour of the scene this year. Ooh, I mean, like a new up and coming team. I don't well, a new train that's been training over the winter. I'll give you an example. I mean, like, like I think Jostin Baranek, right? Did they have a little handshake deal? Who's, who's oh, Baranek? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dra- yeah, Avery and Eric, uh, I think. I think they're playing again. Yeah. I, I cannot confirm that. Well, um, that's Avery was on the podcast. But, uh, and last, and last to, to the last of my knowledge, they were. But but it seemed like it seemed like they had a good little mojo going at the end of last year. Um, yeah. Because I think Avery is like... Dude, he, yeah. From when I used to play, like, I used to play with him in the summers when I went to college in Santa Barbara because he was up there, maybe at Claremont or whatever. But, uh, right. I thought he was like, like, nice guy and everything. I was like, this guy will never be good at beach. And man, did he prove me wrong. So, like, and we're, we're good buddies. Um, so he's always been like a fighter, had to work so hard to stay in the main draw. I'm always so impressed. He's never afraid to grind in the qualifier. Um, and then Eric, too, is just a grinder. Um, and it didn't go real well for him and Troy. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't know what exactly it was. They're friends. Um, that's, that's what we're Yeah, wrong. they're friends and yeah, whatever. But uh, <laughs> but I think Avery and Eric kind of, they have a good mojo. They're both grinders. They're both enthusiastic. So I think they I think they could do some damage, actually. So they'll be yeah. an interesting team to watch. That's my new interesting team, too. Um, yeah, the Taylors will be interesting, obviously. Taylor and Taylor, yeah. Um, I actually saw the sand cast. There were like eight of them on there drinking whiskey, and and um, yeah. Uh, do I, do I, am, am I gonna be hater Jay today? Yeah, fuck it. That was painful. <laughs> it was look, look they look they had a good time. I've I'm not, never watched any of those shows. Like yeah. the sand cast, I was on it. I think I never yeah. watched it, but uh, yeah, I never watched yeah, the whiskey with Nick the crabs. I'm just, just knowing Nick would be interesting. It was to Nick. Me. It was Taylor. It was Try. It was Trevor. Uh, at Travis Mirwitter, there were like six of them, and they're just da- just down in the whiskey. Yeah. And I think for them, because Travis said it was the best hour and twenty minutes he had in such a long time. And I think for them, you know, with the inside jokes and shit like that, and for the people on the outside looking in, um, there's a differentiation, right? Yeah. It's like John Malkovich. Uh, I, I don't know if you're in a film or theater. Like I've seen him in plays that his performance was amazing but he ruined the whole f- he really his yeah. performance ruined the whole fucking play uh, <laughs> uh, collectively and you, you we could probably think of movies like that too where someone's performance were um just ruined the whole movie yeah. you know so and and i don't want to sound like hater jay I, I was just like wow they're having a good time and i have no idea what the hell you're talking if you're talking about right now yeah <laughs> Yeah, how you watched that whiskey with the crab shell? I, I've never seen it. It was well, Travis posted it on his wall. Um, yeah, I know it was like a because co- everybody else is getting notifications except my podcast. It's fucking weird. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in Facebook purgatory right now, but and I'll tell you about that later. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, the uh oh is what the fuck did I do? Right? Um, you violated uh, community guidelines, but they won't tell me what. Hmm. They won't tell me what. They, uh, I'm you a, have an idea. I have one. <laughs> I have two ideas. Um, um, but um, fuck it. Let's. How can, what, what how can I it? say we'll talk about that later? Let's just fucking talk about it now, Theo. First of all, what time? I got a clock right here. What time you gonna get out of here? It's because I mean, I I told the wife an hourish, but I can I can stay for a little longer. All right, good. God, we gotta look. We ha- and listen before I get to the story. We had a conversation of uh, we want to give young men. There's my camera. If you're lucky enough to have a girl that doesn't ask you for shit. All right, let's you do whatever you want, but then ask you to do one or two things. Just do, just do the one or two things, man. Oh, Don't sure. start no shit, dude. All right, so that's what I wanted to say about yeah. that. So Facebook, 
I get back from Mammoth, right? And Facebook notifies me that all of my accounts have been disabled for violating community guidelines. Do you want to appeal? I'm, I press appeal because I think I have a written thing. Yeah. No written thing, just a push button appeal. A, a day later, <laughs> well, we decided that you still violated our guidelines, so now you're permanently disabled. I'm just like, okay, fuck, I'll deal with this when I get back. And then when I get back, my personal account's up, but then the Option Podcast, which, by the way, is the most viewed volleyball podcast in, in the sport. Like second, third, and fourth combined. I have wow. more viewership than the next three combined. Wow. Not just that, through plays too, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But so that's permanently disabled. And then NY Varsity Sports, my, my Facebook handle, is still published. But if I put up a video, they're not notifying my viewers. Okay. So that, that whatever. Like, look, you've been on a podcast, you got followers, I'm good. No, I mean, we're good. There are enough people that, that hate you enough and love you enough where, where you're yeah. going to have a viewership anyway. Um, but it's just weird. It's just weird. And, and I'm like, do I, do I go after them legally because I'm, I'm a principle driven person? Like you could say some wacky shit about me, but you can never say I'm dishonest. You can never say I did anything or said anything unethical, you know, and every, anything controversial. Was, it, my, my was it political? Were you getting political on here? Well, I mean, I think if you say Joe Rogan, right, that's like saying Candyman three times, maybe. Uh, um, I did a solo. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the thing. I had two, two, two podcasts that they could have possibly done before. One, I did a Facebook wall post called um, Follow the Science, right? And there was this chronology, like in the beginning, they told us to hunker down, socially distance. All right, yeah. makes sense, boom. And then when the vaccine came out, all right, cool, we get the jab, we don't have to wear a mask, fuck it, jab me twice, you know? Um, but then all of a sudden the booster, oh, that's just for old people. Uh, don't worry about it. And but now the booster is for everybody, and now you have to take it. And then the the World Health Organization yeah. uh, was talking about the efficacy of boosters, and the CDC doesn't agree with their findings. So at the yeah, end, I think recently they just so said the for end, eighteen to forty nine, like it yeah. does it doesn't help you at all. Yeah. So I was like, so I was I, sick I, for two days. Honestly, I think reason. it sucks for them to say do what you want after they went um, through months and months of gaslighting people and hazing yeah. people. I, I mean, very yeah. unfair. Um, and you know I'm well, very here we very, go then I'm sure you that's know, why you got like, well sure I thought that could have been it because at yeah. the end I put follow the science and I put in parentheses political um, and for me I just can't figure out how people's um, mentality gets hijacked by um, their affiliation like can't you just be a person and say this does this make sense this yeah. doesn't make sense you don't because to, to me you don't have to be a doctor to talk about socio socio-economical impact yeah. right Scientists are not qualified for that. They live yeah. in a fucking lab. They don't care. Yeah. So, but it's not that because that post is still up. Interesting. That's still up. The the other one was I did a fly solo episode. No, no, no guest. Where I called it free speech is not popular speech. And I was basically saying free popular speech doesn't need protection, right? Yeah. Free speech does. So it was addressing two things. Whoopi Goldberg. The whole Holocaust thing, um, when she said, I heard lightly about. I watched Bill Maher, yeah. so he's referenced it a bunch. Yeah. Well, she got in trouble by saying the Holocaust wasn't about race; it was white people killing white people, and a lot of. Yeah. And I disagree with her, but when she went on Colbert and said, "I apologize and I won't talk about it again," I thought we lost out on a teaching moment because somewhere in a classroom, there's going to be a black kid that raises his hand and say, "Teacher, how do the, the Germans know who the Jews were if everyone's white?" Right. And maybe guys like you and me that understand the culture, that, that's, that's an easy question to ask. But for a kid who only was raised only to identify race as pigmentation, right? Maybe that's yeah. – so, so I, I, one of my complaints was I thought we lost a teachable moment on that. And the yeah. second part was Rogan. Um, Rogan about – he had that nine-minute video apologizing. He, like, he didn't want any trouble about medical misinformation. So I had this John Stewart window behind me. Like anything he said that was I thought was untrue, boom, the source popped up. Anything I thought he was right, I stopped the video, boom, the source popped up. So someone can still label that medical misinformation even though any, everything that was a question of fact. Yeah. I had the site. And then uh, the picture of the quote, and then scrolling in, um, zooming in, and then scrolling up and down so people could read it. It, it was G, it was G E D easy. So, yeah. so sorry about that. Did I veer? Did we veer the fuck away? No, we I, mean, I, about I was genuinely story. curious. Yeah. So none of that sounds so, sounds too bad. But um, Meta took over, and Meta I, uh, is doing that to a lot of people for no reason. And I think a lot of people when they confirm their identity. Because when you have a post, they want to make sure you're not a bot. And I think that's what's okay. going on. Okay. And you're supposed to wait 48 business business hours, which really means like 
a week. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to see where they go from that. But by the end of the week, I want to talk to an attorney because I don't, I, I'm, I'm a highly principled person. I'm, yeah. I say kooky shit, all right? And, and, and I do criticize volleyball players with volleyball, <laughs> right? But it, you've never, you've known me for quite a bit, um, um, maybe not particularly well, but you've never known me to be unethical. No, for sure. You've never known me to be dishonest, and you've never known me to not be a good person. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we'll see. We'll see how that works. Sorry, fan question. Fan question. So, new teams to go against. Uh, points with partners. So, you said um, Trevor and Try are probably first or second. You guys They're are one, and one. Yeah. They're yeah. first. Yeah, we're we're second as a team. We're second. Yeah. Um, and then shoot, I, would I really... think it's Chase and Troy in third. Mm -hmm. Nick and Andy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is Billy still playing? I think playing? Nick and Andy are in fourth. Uh, Billy, I think I heard at one point he might play with Miles Evans. I don't know if that's true because he's kind of looking for someone and didn't have anybody. Yeah. Um, so I have no idea on that. So why isn't Miles like a hot commodity? I mean, he seems like he's got pretty good hardware and software. Yeah, I actually, uh, before the pandemic started, um, I was going to play with him internationally that year. Um, we were going to do kind of a trial thing, and then AVP, I was going to do Tim Baumgren. Um, but then, yeah, so we trained a bunch. Uh, actually, we worked with Scott a little bit. Um, and yeah, Miles is like one of the most talented defenders out there. He's like, I don't know, underrated, like, but people don't talk about Miles that much for defense, but he's a great defender. Yeah. Um, and then it's like a little bit of ups and downs with some of the other stuff. But like, I I think he's one like, like if he went off this year and just became like this super nasty all around player, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So basically like that. I mean, yeah. So I, I like him. He's, he's a good guy. Um, and I, I hope he kind of figures it out because he's real close to being a top player. Um, He's got yeah. physically. He's got the goods, you know. And oh yeah, for sure. Well, my biggest critique of him is, will the real Miles Evans please stand up? It's, I mean, you got a Miles Evans that made the finals, I think, with, with Avatar, right? And um, yeah. Did he play you? Did he no, play you? And um, me and Reed were in Tokyo for that one. No, no, no. I'm talking about um, Hermosa Beach, 2019. Uh, we played him uh, in Manhattan Beach. Me and Johnny Hayden. Okay. That was after me and Reed split up. <laughs> and oh, then, was it and David then we, Lee and, the and then we got like a third. Was it David Lee and Rosie? I'm yeah, to and then we were was. in the qualifier again after that. That was awesome because yeah. I didn't have four tournaments. Hawk catch your ass. Who you playing with? He's playing with Came Shock. Came Shock. That was Hawk. um, Donnie Bass was like um. I haven't seen Hawk in a while. Yeah, I like played him back in the Norseka qualifiers once in a while. What? Back when they had like a system yeah. that made sense, like Norseka, Opens, yeah, Grand Slams. That, Everyone's like, man, why don't we just do that? It made so much sense. That <laughs> man's level of caring for the sport is so huge. He's so much, and he was. I, when I moved here, he was so much fun to talk about, to talk to. You know, I had a ball. He's like, do you want to play some pickup? We're looking for a fourth, because um, the guy he was playing with went to NYU, and um, you know, I got roots uh, from the East Coast because mm -hmm. I was coaching out there. You know, with Baruch and all those, all the other, all, all the other teams. And he was just such a fun guy to play with. Like it was the first time I ever saw a four block as a as a blocking sign. I, and I just went. Oh really? <laughs> and I just went like this, like like okay. And then he goes, he looks at me, and I go, man. He goes, he's like, look, if you don't know, do you don't have to shake your head? Yeah. <laughs> like you know, I'll just tell you what it is. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, because grass and when we play grass and and on the East Coast, like Sherwood and Connecticut, yeah. right? You've been lived in Connecticut, you know. That's, yeah. that's a big. They have a pretty decent open level, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. just ones and twos, man. Oh, we're, sure. we're just ones yeah. and twos, and that was that was fun. Um, so, my other question is: Do you, when you play, do you hear the noise? Mm, almost not at all. So, you mean like, like outside of? The court? Yeah. No, yeah. Theo sucks, Basically, right? Theo's pregnant with my child. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll hear that stuff. It really, I guess I'm usually so like, if you can't tell from watching me, like a bit introverted and like on the inside. So I'm always just like, like the thing that I found that works for me in difficult moments and matches is just like, I'm just going to control these couple variables. If it doesn't go well, F it. But I'm not going to like get all antsy and do anything outside of what, you know, I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm usually focused on that. So like someone might say something, I'll be like, 
And now I didn't even used to like look, but now I'll be like, oh, okay, it's that guy talking a bunch of shit. Like, <laughs> I'm not like I literally can't yell loud right. enough with my mm-hmm. vocal cords the way that I am to like talk shit back. So I would love to, but they'd be like, what? Like I can't hear you. So I just whatever, say what you're gonna say. Um, I've never had like anybody that was like so so bad to me that I felt like I wanted to punch them anything like that like that's never happened to me I don't think I elicit that out of anybody but uh, but I mean hunting like to me the single worst place is for um dealing with hecklers is Huntington Beach like some of the things like I remember my first my first Huntington Beach uh the first heckle incident was um Ty Trambley and Brad Keenan were playing Adam Robinson Lorenz. Okay. And there was just a guy that was just going hard at Trambley. Just hard. Almost to a point where like the second game and and when you have a game two to twenty one and it finishes thirty three to thirty one. Yeah. And this fucking dude's still going. Like so yeah. when it, when they call captains, Brad Keenan, they call the captain, he just comes to the sideline and he's like, Come here, let me talk yeah. to you for a second. Just step right start stand right here and the guy wouldn't do it. He says, No, I'm not gonna hurt yeah. you, stand right here. And even at the end when try Ty won, the guy left and he said, You're still a douchebag and I'm just like Wow, yeah. even the game's I guess over. Something right like now. that. Yeah, something just, like that could irritate yeah. me. And I've seen it irritate others. Yeah. It's, I think it's when it's yeah super loud, mm-hmm. kind of like classless. Like like it's one thing if they're making fun of you in like a funny way, right? That's like creative and whatnot. Yeah. But if they're just like yelling random mean obscenities, yeah, like really loudly for a really long time. Like actually, there was this one situation I played with Casey Patterson in Russia. We won our pool. It was like a three star way back when. Yeah. Um, and then we were playing some Moylov Smedins. And I kid you not, there was this Russian dude who just every single play was just talking shit to Casey. We couldn't understand it, but he would like laugh. So like Casey would get blocked or hit one out and he'd just go, oh, ho, 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 ho. and it would make Casey so angry. And I think Casey ended up like not playing the best. We lost in three and I totally got it because I was like, this guy is like, that's when it, that's when it can get to you is when it's just like stupid, like. Just like you're being like you're dumb. All the things you're saying are dumb. You're just do, like who knows why you're doing it. That's when it like affects my brain because I'm just like, why is this happening right yeah. now? Like who is this person and like why right. do they think that this is entertaining? Like what are they doing? That'll mm-hmm. get me. Like but any sort of normal shit talk or you suck or whatever. Like whatever. I don't. I barely well, hear it. What well, it can go so many ways. Like like if I'm on tour or let's say I'm just coaching you guys on the tour or whatever. Um, and there was a little bit of that with Rafa and Kevin McCullough because I actually helped them um, okay. prepare for um, Manhattan 2016. Mm-hmm. I helped them get into the draw. I actually played in that one too in the qualifier. Game. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> just I was 47, just wanted to have fun, got my ass kicked, whatever. Tyler Lucas, redundant okay, kid. Okay. And um, I took this into consideration. They're heckling Ty Trambley. And then like two hours later, they're heckling John Mayer. <laughs> so it already just tells you like the kind of environment, like let me just reprogram my brain because yeah. it's not like they're going after someone they know they can get to. Like like Ty heard a little bit of a John. I don't, I'd be surprised if John hears any of it, you know? Yeah. And um, John, a year later, the, next, the very next Huntington, they had a, there's a female ref, there's a married couple. And, and I'm sharing this story, and I, I really shouldn't, but I think I will anyway. There's a female ref, and um, she made a call actually for John, like in his favor. And someone's like, oh, my God, this chick refs. Fucking women shouldn't ref. And all. I mean, just kept going. And then on the switch off, John comes up to the guy. And the ref's husband told me this story. Um, John comes up to the guy. He says, I don't care who you are. If you talk to her like that one more time, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. John Mayer said that? Skinny ass, fucking uh, peaceful, mild mannered. You mean okay. be, beat up in the fist fight? Yes. The, the, <sighs> this man said hard, that. I, I bet. And when he went to the other side, nobody cheered, nobody booed, uh, because it was something. They it's when you see some out of the out of the ordinary, yeah. all you can do is not say anything okay. and and take it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John Mayer. Yeah, that's crazy. Fucking said that. Good for him though. And he confirmed that. Because so. uh, I was his director of operations. I was his assistant at LMU yeah. for two years, for a year and a half. And he, um, a picture behind me, man. Uh, look at that oh, chair. Look at go. that WCCs, man. This is the California wall, but I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. So, no, but this wall behind me, I left blank because everything I did on the East Coast and did overseas didn't mean shit. 
because you become complacent. So yeah. if you have this white wall you got to look at all the time, you're like, all right, I, yeah, I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get to work and do shit. So, but John, the husband told me that story, and I asked John about it, and John's like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't want to talk about that. And I said, oh, okay, all right, I get it, I get it. Good for you, John. Yeah, but he did, he did yeah. the husband a favor because the husband, the rest husband, is there. And you yeah. really want to come after the guy and say, "Hey, why don't you why don't you fucking relax?" Yeah. And, and but you can't because you're refing, and and it's it's a gig, it's a job, yeah. it's work, and and it's supposed to come with the territory. So John, yeah. John let a lot of people off the hook with that. Yeah, for sure. You That's know? awesome. So what stop are you looking forward to? Oof. Ah oh, man, international or AVP? Well, let's start with the tour. Let's start. Actually, um, well, tour, and I know you'll occasionally make one or two stops. Maybe you, I don't know, Atlantic City's still 100K. Maybe you go back. Atlantic City. Uh, they got, they're, they're doing twice. Are they? They're, okay. Yeah. I'm not super familiar with the AVP schedule yet. Um, but Atlantic Sam, City. Sam was gross, but. For sure. I mean, yeah. It's gross and it was hot as hell. Like, I almost, I'm pretty anti sand sock, but uh, I almost, I like tried to put them on and they were like these toe socks. And I was struggling a little bit. I was like, screw it. I'll just burn my feet. Like, but that's all from playing with Todd. Todd would not allow sand socks, spandex, right. nothing like that. And I kind of like, like, even though I know it's stupid, I just like rubbed off on me. So, so yeah, it's a Ooh, that course. would have been fun. Just come with some spandex <laughs> yeah. and come with some knee like, highs. Yeah, what come are you with wearing? Some you whatever. Like. And come with a pink headband too. <laughs> yeah. Have a guy next to you at a radio playing Highway to the Danger Zone or some shit. And Todd would just he would be just like, leave, yeah. be God! Like, yeah. 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 Uh, talk oh, about I missed, a, I miss Todd. He was, yeah. he was the man. Yeah. I'll talk about a guy who lost his mind against the Latvians, right? You remember that one? Is that um, the one where he yelled at the ref? Yeah, yeah. Why did they yeah. let this well, chick crap? She dude, sucks. Todd, ah. Todd could get angry. Ah. Put it that we way. Gotta, we got to look. We got to come on. Dude, no, we ain't getting away with that. We got to look that up. Oh, okay. Got, it's been a while since I watched that one. Um, It's viral. I mean, look, there, I can't find my own podcast on YouTube, but I could, dude, <laughs> I yeah. could find Todd loses his mind. <laughs> Watch Todd, this. Like, look what look appears up. Look what pops up. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. So where is it? There it is, right? Todd is so effing mad. So let's. And the Polish woman referee, we we seen her, and she's, I think she's done some domestic stuff too. The the blonde, I don't know if it's the same Polish woman or if it's an older one. I gotta see her. I'm not sure who it is. All right, let's drag this over. To here, and let's do this. And. Sorry, guys. Let's let's play it. Let's just have a little fun. There it is. Got to look down there. So there's someone that's blowing a horn every time you you whist, you you serve, right? Uh, a horn. That was the one. Yeah, they they called the double, or he wasn't square. I think they said maybe he wasn't square. <laughs> he said, "Oh my God!" This and, is back when they were allowed to call it. In the event, so yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not allowed to call it anymore. <laughs> you could even hear on my headset, like he's like, "Yeah." So the camera, it's great because he's right next to the camera when he says, "Why this. would you put this chick up here? She sucks." <laughs> Dude, yeah, man, uh, Todd, he had some blowups on refs, and like, it was gnarly. I can't. I won't. I definitely can't talk about it. He's a coach now. He's respectable. But man, it was hilarious. Like, I, unbelievable the stuff that he would say to refs. <laughs> like, I, dude, Chrissy Jones, um, who played for him uh, as her grad year, um, saw the video and she's like, I, man, I hope that's not the Todd. I hope that's not the Todd that's going to be yelling at me. And I'm like, no, he's, I doubt, yeah. he's chill. Look. Karch Karai, look how tame he is. His Olympic gold medal run and the silver medals he got in 2012 and the bronze in 2016. Um, think about some of the things he did on the beach scene. I remember he just, he, he 
they called a touch on the block and called four hits, and it was the next, and that was match point. The next point, he literally took the net and the referee's chair and ripped down yeah. the entire. I mean, you just he he hulked up. All he yeah. needed was green skin. So so sometimes it's not who you you know not about who you were then. It's who you are now. And, and I think I speak for both of us where we're kind of big on that, right? Like, who were you ten years ago? Right? You're not yeah. that person ten years ago. Yeah, you know, and that person ten years ago is actually a pretty cool, cool fucking dude too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So you're just trying. I'm not. I'm not the same person I was when I moved here, <laughs> yeah. right? So, so, yeah. So this. What's what's one of the stops you like going to? A lot of people say Chicago is fun. I love Chicago. Um, that's one. Like I was actually talking with my wife about it because she's gonna come bring the kids. I have a bunch of family in Wisconsin. They all come out, and I always play like shit because like, like we're always hanging like playing cars and all this stuff so like it's a little bit different mindset i'm not maybe i'm not doing quite as much in the gym and stuff for that which is awesome like i have so much fun at that tournament but this year right for this year i'm like okay i'm gonna be a little bit more evasive of the family stuff until after the tournament's over there it is because i want to give them like something to cheer about and at least make the damn semi like which we should do every time um but yeah, last year, oh man, that sucked last year. We lost to Jeremy and uh, Tim Baumgren. Jeremy just caught fire. Was not serving well all year and was just crushing balls. And they still like barely beat us. It was it was a super painful one. We had a lot of chances, but yeah, he he went off. So hats off to him. He was, I was like, man, you picked that time to go off against us in this game now. Like, thanks a lot, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember 2019 where you you and John had to qualify. Oh, um, that must Hawaii. have been brutal too. And in Chicago, yeah, yeah. Chicago yeah, as Chicago. well. At that time, I, I think was, we lost the first set in one of the matches too. Yeah, yeah. it was Jake and Earl. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I was actually coaching them. Um, um, I, I coached them in Hermosa Beach, their first main draw, um, yeah. 2019, and then Manhattan Beach. I got dropped because they were doing the um, P1440 thing and Arturo, okay, Arturo, okay. yeah. uh, Pompilio. You know those, the, those. I call them the Brazilian Three. They're they're, they're just really, they're really really good at helping you figure out um, things hardware hardware yeah. type. You know, like maybe yeah. maybe not software. I think I think some some people are better with software than hardware. You know, yeah. Um, but. So I got dropped Manhattan Beach, and I'm, I know they were playing you, and I had tons of video on you and Hyde, and I'm like, uh, I'm not angry and crass about getting dropped, but I'm not going to fucking help them. <laughs> I, yeah. ain't get, I was like, they ain't getting no help from me. So, <laughs> But then Hawaii. Yeah, I mean. Ha Hawaii was qualifier like, to I the still finals. I still can't talk about it. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was qualifier to 2015, up one set to zero, 2015 in the second set with the freeze. We were up and we lost. So, and actually the freeze up until then had been like my friend. Like me and John had won a tournament where we were down like 14, 11 or something in Hermosa, came back and won. So I love the freeze. And then that one was no good. Um, and that was the most tired I've ever been after a tournament of volleyball. Cause I got freaking I'm like, serve John, he's 46 and like just shoots it. Like, but everyone's so scared of his pokies. I, for the record, I serve John. When when I play John now, I serve John yeah. all the balls. There you I'm go. I'm not going to put up with his shit. Like, there it goes. He's not going to hit it, everyone. Like, yeah. But yeah, no one would serve him. It was so hot. It was so freaking hot. I was just sweating my balls off. Yeah. And I got every single serve for like the entire tournament. And we had to play like all the best teams like in the U.S. We had to play, yeah, we had to play Trevor and Try and Nick and Phil, um, everybody. Uh, yeah, you had to Casey take... and Chase yeah. in the semi. And then Taylor and Jake, and then yeah, I mean, That's that was brutal. Tough to talk yeah. about. So I don't even like. Yeah. Maybe when I'm like 60, I'll go back and watch that one. <laughs> oh, make sure you come on the podcast. And come on, I think you. Um, <laughs> I'll have to I know you don't owe me that. shit, but I think you owe me that. And literally, you know? like, yeah, my wife, like, she was such a trooper. Staying, I was just like, just stay with me. Like, I'm gonna grind this out. Yeah. Um, because I had like some injuries and all this stuff, and we I didn't have a full boat of tournaments, and then it was like. And then let even me, after that tournament, she's just like, couldn't even talk to me. She was just like, well, let me, <laughs> let me ask you something about that tournament. Maybe not necessarily the end, which we, yeah, yeah. we agree is something you want to talk, talk that, about. It was obviously an amazing tournament. Net, yeah. Like, and that, and that was going to be my question. Was it? We even lost, we lost our first match when we were also up 20 to 15 in the second set after winning the first set. Ironic. Yeah. Crazy, huh? <laughs> like it literally happened twice that tournament. Holy shit. And then we had to, yeah, work our way back up. So. 
was this a tournament as far as 2019 was concerned was it the tournament where you got the biggest emotional high and low at this in the same tournament uh i don't know because i don't get so emotionally high and low it's hard to say like honestly i mean retrospectively you can't i mean you're in the moment you're not feeling shit you're just um, you're just, you're like, theo brunner you're just i mean play this, volleyball. like even at 2015 like there was very little when we were up about to win the tournament like there was very little like i'm telling you we were so freaking tired that like i couldn't think about anything like like we didn't even we didn't warm up for the last like two matches like the semis and the finals were just like let's just go out there i honestly thought john was in the training tent i like i thought he was like dead because like he was yeah. laying there and people were like poking him and he just like wouldn't move and i was just like you're right over there john like <laughs> We were both just cramping our faces off, zero energy. Like all of our, like my joints were just crushed from like just spiking a lot. Um, and yeah, so like there was very little, like if anything, I was just like, God damn, like how are we up right now? Like I, I'm just like just farting the ball around and like not even hitting and stuff, which actually was a great lesson for me. It's like try less inside out and I side out way better. <laughs> like when there I'm not is. just trying to jump and hit everything, but yeah. like, it or, wasn't or a big just, high and low like yeah right. it was just okay and honestly like we were down to nick and phil so like i think they were up like 14 12 or something like that against us in the third set maybe more than that um in in our match against them and i was like dude like you get, and then you get that feeling like you like everybody when they almost lose and then don't plays well after that because you're just like oh i shouldn't even be here right now like i'm just gonna play free and lose so I had some of that going on. So we were just like, oh, like it's not looking good. Came back and won that one. And then after that, it was just fun. So, well, the reason why I brought it up is because on a general level, very few people remember um, mammoth perform performances in the losing effort, right? You, like someone tells someone a story or whatever. And then when they ask the question, did you win? It's like, no, but and then, and then they don't want to hear shit. With that being said, there are these exceptions here and there and here and there and the reason why i brought this up is because i thought hawaii was the exception that was it was a shakespeare it ended up being a shakespearean tragedy right you, you you're you're here and and and, and your moment of victory your turn to reach up and grab grab that yeah. brass ring and it slips through your fingers and and that dude that's a real thing too anyone that's ever done anything competitive in your life can relate oh, to yeah, sure. uh, um um me whatever i'm ex-military i um, I've been playing for a hundred years. I've been, I'm done, I'm done, but I'm, I'm coaching, um, commentating, you know, watching other people get gigs and this and that. But it was, I, I love this talking about this tournament because it relates to life so much you're there you know um i'm a buffalo bills fan dude how, how, how the fuck you think i'm gonna feel about some things yeah. when marv levy says i'm you know i'm just gonna lay here for a little bit and bleed and then i'll get back up and 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 that's all you got I'm, I'm still here i can do this shit all day and that was what i got from that tournament you you had something and you had and it was right there and it slipped and it felt tragic and it still feels tragic i know you i mean right now you're like can we just move on from this shit jason and I, I can i can fucking feel it in the room along with the heat but i wanted before we move on i wanted to to from player to player and i actually consider us pretty pretty good friends too um you have ins it's the rare occasion that you've inspired so many people in a game in a game that that you didn't win and those are 10 times more rare yeah. than someone who came back or whatever. Like nobody w is going to remember that Taylor and yeah. Jake came back from 2015. Nobody talks about Taylor and Jake coming back in the game. That's not something like, oh, my God, I remember that comeback. No, they remember something you might you're, you're right now considering a collapse. All right. But um, but yeah. it's but it's still like but I wanted to let you know there was more to it than that. It was magnificent. Yeah. It was from the Theo fucking Brunner. It's from the qualifier with a yeah. with a guy who's... And by the way, the, the round to get in, we were down, I think, like 12-5 to Rafi and... Uh, shoot, who was and how old was John Hyden in there? He was 47 when he did that, right? Yeah. Dude, it was... Do you know how old like, that is in okay, fucking so volleyball years? Like, so like, you know, like dog years. You know how old that is in yeah. volleyball years, dude? Sorry, guys. Like, like the, the end of that tournament, whatever, the popular... like. But really, like, deep down for me, that was... 
easily right. one of the most meaningful tournaments for me because that was a year like I played with Reed. We didn't get along together. Like we had so many moments where we like could have blasted right. off and been really good and didn't. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a really not fun year for me. So then, and then to be thrust back in the qualifier um, and get back with John, it was just like, and our first tournament was like real bad. That was like a, like, what am I doing? Like, like, who am I? And it was almost yeah. ended up being a great thing. Cause I was just like, like, fuck it. Like, like I'm nobody in this sport. And like, I'm just going to grab my rusty knife and fucking get out there and stab like to the best of my ability. Like, I don't, I don't deserve to be anything. I don't deserve to be in the main draw. I don't deserve any of this. I have to prove it every single point. And that was my mindset in that tournament. And we had a lot of tough games and like tough situations. I had to side out a shitload of balls in really hot weather. But the whole time I just was like, yeah. like I don't care. Like <laughs> this is, I got to prove it every single point. Like no pity party for myself. Like, so that was a bit of a, a rebirth for me, yeah. I think. Um, what our rusty I think night. it's kind of, that rusty knife cut down a lot of machetes that day, though. On yeah, that weekend, yeah. didn't it? I mean, and that's kind of the, and I think it helped me and came like even when we had a rough go around in our first qualifier, like we we're both just ready to grind, and like I am too. Like, like it's awesome when you're in the main draw, and when you're not, the men's qualifier is freaking hard, and everybody's really good. You can lose to anybody for sure, um, so you just got to be like ready. So I think that. That tournament and that experience in Hawaii helped us out last year when we had to play all these tough matches in the qualifier. But I was ready for it. I was like, screw it. Like, so we could else? lose this, yeah. but I'm going all out. I'm going to do it my way um, and then live with the result instead of being like cautious. And like, even that yeah. Cancun tournament, I was just jump serving every ball. Like, screw it. Like, if, if we lose and I miss a ton of serves, like, I don't care. Yeah. Um, and there are and games. I scored a bunch with it. No, so. but there are, there are games where you have to do that. Because anything other than that is going to be disastrous, right? Yeah. It could end up disastrous anyway. But if it's if you go in thinking it might end up disastrous anyway, why not just yeah. fucking, yeah? And John Hyden, I guess you look at someone like that, and again, forty-seven is really like seventy-one in volleyball years, right? I, um, yeah. I mean, the only smart thing John Hyden's done his career—not the only smart thing, but one of the smartest things he's done his whole his career—is get the hell out of the indoor scene early. You know, like a lot yeah. of people forget. Um, Hayden was in the 96 Olympics, Atlanta. Yeah. He, he played, he was, um, they called him whiskers back then. And he, um, he played on that indoor team and he did, he did, he did play. Um, there was a game to get in, to get out of pool or whatever. And I forget, I think it's Bulgaria and they went to five sets. He played all five sets and I thought they lost, but it wasn't because of him, man. He yeah. looked, man, he looked good out there, but him hitting the beach. And also you having a partner like that, it's like, fuck, whenever I start yeah. feeling for myself, my knees tweak, uh, this and that. Yeah, yeah. And you look at this guy, you look John at this guy who's old enough to be your father and, yeah. and he's not out there talking about that. Actually, in retrospect, I wish, I mean, it's obvious, it's easy in retrospect, but I wish 2019, the year I played with Reed, we kind of like, we didn't even officially break up. I was just kind of like, man, like he's kind of old to make a run and everything. And then I mm -hmm. think, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it worked I kinda, for, I ended didn't that, it work for both of you? I ended that year with an injury, so I didn't play the last tournament in Chicago. Right. I pulled out of the semi in Manhattan, actually, because that was the first time I messed my calf up. Yeah. And it's kind of nice. I remember me now. that. And I was just like, I remember that you go. beat Rafu and Ed. And yeah. then the next day. And I was like, yeah, I could, that, I did not feel good. That's the match that I like did it. Uh -huh. So I was kind of like, dude, John, like, you got to carry me here like I can't. But luckily, I could jump vertically. I just couldn't run very well. Yeah. And we gutted it out and won that one. But in retrospect, like now that I've played the game more, I was like, man, me and John, we had like a special defense. Like we just F people like we could just turn a bunch of points all of a sudden on defense. Um, yeah. And I, it was fun to play. And I like I sort of wish in 2019 we had played. Um, and anyone who watches the sport sees that too. Like even when I was watching, like um, when FIVB came to um her Huntington Beach, I thought you showed a lot of that against the Italians. I think you did. You play with John Hyden against the yeah. Against we Italy? we winner winners bracketed up to fifth. Then we lost to Ivandro on a bullshit net call. By the way, yes. In the second set, we should have won that second set. I and take that game. The thing that upset me. The Sorry. Thing that upset and my varsity me, sports. But go ahead. It's like the most obvious net ever if you watch the replay. Yeah. And the thing that annoys me is like most people after the game will be like, yeah, I netted. 
And I, we asked Ivandra, we we're like, we we're on the bus with him. We we're like, hey, you netted on that one, right? Like, we weren't like mad about it with him because whatever. Like, oh, God, what did he say? You're not going to screw yourself. And he's just like, no, 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 I didn't net. And we we're just like, what the? And then we watched the video and we we're just like, screw Dude, that. Like, yeah, <laughs> come God, on. Ivandro, man. You got to admit it eventually. But God. it's possible he doesn't speak a lot of English. It's possible he just like didn't understand us. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. No. That, but and I was and, and by ounce, it. look, a lot of people that watch you guys play, because you guys wear your heart on your sleeve, they think they it automatically entitles them to think that they know you, right? So I'm yeah. careful when I'm saying when I'm gonna say what I'm about to say next. An ounce of behavior is worth a pound of a pound of words. Yeah. Someone behaves like no touch and this and that, and the way he walks with his head down as if everything happens. You watch someone play long enough, you're either can he knew he touched on that or he's convincing himself yeah. he didn't. Yeah. Or somehow, some way. He, he he couldn't feel it, even though he's, uh, his arms are not like packed with muscle where he couldn't feel yeah. it. He, he felt that. He touched that net, dude. Yeah, oh, it, but, was, um, it was a massive net. Yes. A hundred percent. It was Nemo. <laughs> yeah. It was fine. It was it, that was some fond and Nemo uh, shit, yeah. right? Yeah, it was really so, How many kids you got? Two. So three and a half year old and an eight month old. So You got a three and a half? Yep. I got a five year old. I got a five year old little toe head walking around <laughs> looking like Queen Denarius from Game of Thrones, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, shoot. I guess my daughter's a little bit like that too. She's just got like flowing blonde, yep. huge hair. No did idea you, where. Did you have from. that when you were a kid, or I, I was like platinum blonde. Um, okay. But the amount of hair, I don't know where that comes from. Yeah. So, my wife. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, let's do a lightning round and I get okay. you out of here because it's, okay, it's okay. it is yeah, good. The wife's probably... speaking of hot as hot as balls, right? Um, favorite venue to play in. Tell me again. Ooh, I mean, I'd say it was New York when they had that. I fucking love New York. Too. Um, just uh, being like close to home. And they're not um, doing a tour. They're not doing New York this year. They're not. I hope it comes back. We'll see. Um, but I'm, I don't know. I love all the big stops. Right. Chicago, Manhattan, Hermosa. Um, I don't love. I didn't love Texas in the past. Cause I had a bad tournament and it was super hot. That's mm -hmm. about it though. <laughs> like, right. Um, the team that is always, that you felt was a stylistic nightmare for you internationally or domestically. Um, the worst matchup for me. Well, early on it was, it was Jake for sure. Jake and Ta Jake domestically and right. for some reason, I think I'm undefeated against Jake and Taylor internationally. Maybe we played like three times. But domestically, uh, I think they got the better of me by a couple. Um, but Jake just like, he was like good at blocking without penetrating at all. So that like, and my bread and butter, especially in years past, I've kind of gotten my way out of it a good amount now, was the high seam hit. Cause it would just like against shorter blockers, it would just be unstoppable. Like best case scenario, you're getting a tough on two play. But Jake like would just reach straight up and like, block it really well so like so with him and taylor like they were always getting touches and able to transition out of it and it would just frustrate the shit out of me um but it led me to be a much better side out player now so now i can hit the sharp have better vision do the low line all that stuff so best condition partner nick lucena nick lucena who ironically cool. does zero conditioning so. most most animated partner Oof. was it patterson i mean yeah it's got to be patterson but nick nick too Nick yeah, too, for I remember. I remember Barnett asking. Um, I think he was asking you, like, are you the best sneaky blocker in the EVP? And then the camera caught Casey Patterson going, <laughs> "Like, what is yeah. that? Did did he just insult you, or was it a compliment? Or yeah. it was his? Like, I'm face. pretty sure statistically, I've been like the best, but uh, when, but, I'm just boring. I'm boring. Yeah, when I get but when he, I get blocks and then I just. But walk I back, think that's. So. But I think that's what Casey was thinking. Because oh, yeah, his sure. face, again, an ounce of behaviors worth a pound of words, he went. Yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. And all right, before we go, I, I maybe, or maybe I'll just say this for another podcast. I wanted to talk about the point system for USA Volleyball and this and that and some of the things that Kristen Nuss and Cloth are going through. They really, they genuinely want to stick together. But uh, the way it works right now, in order to get points, you have to play with someone with points. And I don't, I don't like it because it's kind of this 
good old boy setup where like someone can pick one of them up and if it works they're a fucking genius and if it doesn't they get dropped and then and points wise they're they're pretty much back where they started from with a, with a little bit more wasted time it's like yeah. it's like theater of the absurd it does it sucks um but it used to it used to not be so bad like i don't think usa volleyball is doing it on purpose i think that's the result is that you have this super nasty team with zero points and there's not a good way for them to play um it's more just kind of how the international scene is now because usa they try they try and keep it like hey like like we're not going to play favoritism they're really strict about that like mm -hmm. if you have enough points you can play we're not but gonna, isn't we're the not system say you're better than you but isn't the system itself set up for favoritism the it system, does, does, does it not does it not favor the people who are already to get now, their pick of the litter especially starting now because so why it didn't used to be like that is because they would have the Norseka qualifiers right and Norseka's had a decent amount of points so if you went and won some Norsekas, you're you're golden. You could play any tournament. But didn't you, you want. have? But didn't you have but, to get points to get into Norseka? USA Volleyball would allow right different teams. Like uh, I think in that in that circumstance for a Norseka quality, they could take a Terran Cloth, Kristen Noose. So, yeah, yeah, a Noose Cloth. I just know their last names real well, and they could put them in that Norseka quality. Say, hey, these guys are good up and comers. Nobody would argue about a wild card into a Norseka qualifier, like an eight team qualifier for one or two spots. No. Nah. Um, so, so they could do that and they had a path, but now it's like, I guess you got to hope that there's space in some of these like futures tournaments and then pay a bunch of money to go play like, and that's kind of more of the, the international system is just like messed up right now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, can but can you appreciate why how I think that that favors oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, people yeah. who are already oh, there? Sure. They they sure. again they look like geniuses if they're right and if they're having wrong. no points is like a yeah yeah it's tough these days very tough man but and you're gonna see more cases like that too because women's volleyball since it's become yeah. an NCAA uh, sport that generation of players let's just put Chrissy Jones in that category let's yeah. put Kristen Nuss let's put Tina Gardino in that category who um played for Latvia and is now playing with Dane right yeah. it was Dane another year let's uh make a uh, craft and maple let's um that that generation of girls are ready for some hostile takeover right and look you yeah. got Kleiman and Ross sponsoring and Clay's not not playing together anymore I think what no. Clay's is playing with um Clay's and Betsy Betsy Flint um yeah. And then Sponsel and Therese. Therese. Tannis, yeah. Yeah. I hope Kelly Reeves gets a good partner too because she was playing some of her best volleyball last yeah. year too. I got this here in Atlantic City. But um, okay. So, Theo, we got um, kids to pick up from school. <laughs> yeah. I got to go back and take the baby. Yeah. And I got to cut. Mad. And, dude, I got to cut this bush. I, know, <laughs> I got a, I got a three o'clock three o'clock appointment. Is there a particular Instagram handle or, or um, oh, man, something dude, I've been someone like, wants to get Theo more because? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, I'll check messages or whatever, but I've been super inactive in social media. Like, I just, I never really liked it. Like, I had a stretch where I was doing it, but okay, at Lord Brenner, Lord Brenner on Instagram. Um, okay. I think it might be Twitter. I don't even know if I have a Twitter anymore. Um, and Facebook, just my name, just look me up. So yeah, at Lord Brenner. I like that. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, people. So Theo might love you, but I don't love you. In fact, <laughs> I can't stand any of you. In fact, I'm out of here and so is he. So for all of you at home, for all of you on your iPhone, for all of you on your iPad, for all of you on your desktop, who runs the world? Old school, baby. Old school. So for my man, Lord Theo Brunner, this is episode 132 of the Option Podcast. I'm Jason DeBiss. I'm going to hit my music. Stay with me. And... We're out. Come check out the Option Podcast on optiondb.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're going to love what you hear.